welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be talking about celibacy within a sexual relationship if you are someone that has been in a relationship where you have been having sex with your boyfriend or your girlfriend and you decide that you want to become celibate then i'm going to be talking about a few different things that you may want to think about in the process of going through with your decision to become celibate there may be several reasons why you want to become celibate but as someone that if you've watched my pre previous videos um, and you know what I'm about, I'm a Christian. So if I'm talking about celibacy, I'm going to be talking about it from a Christian perspective. So if you are wanting to become celibate because you feel that this is what God wants you to do because of what he stated in the Bible about not having sex outside of marriage, and you have been having sex outside of marriage and now you feel that you want to do things God's way and become celibate and wait until you get married before you continue to have sex then this is what this video is about I've had a few people ask me questions um, regarding the fact that they are in a sexual relationship and they want to become celibate because they want to live for God, they want to please God with their bodies. I too, as you know, have been in that position where I was in a relationship with somebody and I was having sex and then I realised that I no longer wanted to have sex outside of marriage because I felt convicted of my sin. I felt that this is something that God doesn't want for me and I want to do things the right way. I want to do things according to what my faith teaches because I felt that there's no point in me being a Christian and calling myself a Christian and I'm not actively living my life according to that. So if I genuinely love God and I want to please him, then I have to take steps in my life. I actually have to live that out and take the necessary steps uh, in order to do that. And me refraining from having sex outside of marriage was one of those many steps that I've taken in order to try and um, live my life according to what God wants me to live. Sex and celibacy is just one small aspect of the Christian life, okay? There's so many things that we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis um, in trying to live for God because being a Christian is a lifestyle. It's not just a religion, it's the way that you live your life. So the only reason why I am speaking on this area is because this is my area of experience. I've been there and I know that sin can have a very deep stronghold and it can really um, stop you from actually moving forward in your relationship with God and maturing in your walk with God because we're all baby Christians when we first give our lives to Jesus and then we have to mature, we have to grow. So we can't mature, we can't grow in our relationship with God um, if we refuse to let go of certain things that we know is wrong and sinful um, according to our faith. One thing that I have definitely learned in my journey and in my relationship with God is that you have to be able to get to a point in your relationship with God where your desire to please God is far greater than your desire to please any human being. If that means that you will be persecuted, if that means that you will be ridiculed, if that means that people are going to laugh at you, if that means you're going to lose friends, if that means that um, you have to be by yourself for a while, then it literally has to get to that point. You have to be able to get to a point in your relationship with God where God actually is first. A lot of us like to say, yeah, God first, God first. But is God really first? We want to please God. And if that means that we have to let some people go, we have to 
change certain things about our lifestyle then so be it because the goal is to live for God the goal is to do the things that God has called us to do here on this earth the goal is to make sure that more and more each day we're becoming more and more like Christ the Bible calls us ambassadors for Christ here on this earth now we can't be an ambassador for Christ when we're living the complete opposite of what he's asked us to do in the Bible so unless you are actually serious about your relationship with god it's very difficult for you to move to the next level in your in in growth and in your spirituality and your maturity in christ okay because i'm a female i'm gonna be speaking as a female with a boyfriend okay so if you're a guy watching this you can apply it obviously to your girlfriend one of the questions that you have to ask yourself um, is that if you are wanting to be celibate does your man want to be celibate that's something that you need to actually ask because if he is not on the same page as you then it's going to be very difficult for you to continue in that relationship you guys already know that i'm gonna keep it 100 okay so wait for these damn sirens Okay. If your man is not interested in waiting till marriage, it's going to be very difficult for you to continue in that relationship because at some point there will always be a temptation for you to have sex because both of you are not on the same page. And that's something that I experienced when I had to break up with my daughter's father because he wasn't trying to be celibate. So there would always be a time where he's going to try and sleep with me. So it's going to be very difficult for your boyfriend to continue in a relationship with you where you guys have previously had sex and then now you're saying that you don't want to have sex anymore. And for him, one, it's going to be frustrating because he's thinking... Oh, hell no like what's the problem and at the same time for yourself if this is something that you genuinely want to do and this is your goal that i am not having sex i do not want to have sex until i get married i want to please god i want to live for god i want to do the things that god wants me to do then it's literally going to be a constant clashing that's going to be happening because you might start thinking oh if he's not having sex with me then is he having sex with a next girl ain't nobody got time for that that's gonna be running for your mind because you know deep down that he's not about that life he doesn't want to wait till marriage he wants to have sex when he wants to have sex you're not at peace within yourself because you're thinking okay i'm in a relationship with this person i love this person i've been with this person for three years four years five years seven years six months a year however long it may be and you're not giving up the vagina you're thinking okay so where is he getting vagina from he's not getting vagina from me so where is he getting vagina from it's just going to be a very sticky situation and I believe I had somebody say to me that they had been in a relationship with someone for seven years and they want to become a celibate. What, what do I do? As women, I understand how it feels when you have been in a relationship with someone for years and I'm talking about three years, four years, five years, six years, seven years, maybe even ten years. You have been with this person for a very long time and you don't want to have to end something or break something up just because you don't want to have sex anymore. I totally get that. I was that person, okay? I was with my daughter's dad for about four years before we ended up breaking up because I wanted to become celibate. Now, what you have to really think about is that is the amount of time that you have spent with that person worth you continuing in sin? Is that time frame of you 
having been in a relationship with that person more important to you than living the rest of your life according to what God has desired for you? That's the question that you need to ask yourself. If you feel that it's more important to you to maintain your relationship because you've been there for so long and you love this person so much, is that more important to you than you coming out of sin and continuing your life living the way that God has intended you to live? These are the questions that you need to ask yourself. And these are the questions that you need to have a conversation about with your boyfriend. Another thing is, if your boyfriend is willing to wait with you, and if he sees you as somebody that he would want to marry one day, and he's willing to withhold and not have sex with you, then fantastic. You know, that's amazing. That's great. How long he's able to wait is another question. But if he genuinely wants to support you in your decision, he may not be a Christian, okay? That's another, that's another topic as well that I'm going to cover as well. Because the Bible speaks about not being unequally yoked. It's advisable that as a Christian that we be with Christians because it's just, it just makes life a lot more easier if you're both on the same page and you both believe in the same way. Now, if your boyfriend is somebody who is not a Christian, as in like a practicing Christian, not just a Christian because he grew up in church or his parents are Christians or he was baptized. I'm talking about a Bible believing Christian, a man who actually wants to live for God. If he is not that person where he actively seeks to live according to the Christian faith, then it's gonna be very difficult for him to see why you want to become celibate. He's gonna see it very, he's gonna find it very difficult to see why you want to go down this path. But if he's supporting of you, then great. If he feels that, okay, cool, my girl wants to become celibate, I'm happy to wait with her, I'm happy to be faithful to her and be celibate as well with her, we can do this together, we'll, we'll stop having sex until we get married because this is something that she wants to do then, you know, give it a try. See if it works out. I hope it does. But you have to bear in mind that his motive for wanting to become celibate is not something that he is doing for himself. He's doing it because you want to do it. Whereas your motive is because you want to do it. You want to please God. You want to live for God. There's a deep desire on the inside of you where you feel that Anything that is not God's will for my life, I no longer want it. I no longer want to partake in it. I no longer want to be living in sin. So your reasoning for becoming celibate is more grounded in a sense because you have that conviction on the inside of you. Whereas your boyfriend doesn't have that same conviction. He's just trying the thing. Do you know what I mean? He's just seeing if he can do what you're doing in order to make you happy, which is great. But then it's so much easier for him to turn around and be like, you know what, this is not for me, you know. The sunlight is really trying to play with me right now. I love the sun, but this is not the time to be shining all up in my video, messing up my light. Like what's going on? Okay, my forehead is just gonna be shining right now, just put the spotlight on my forehead right there. Okay, I gotta make sure that I stay in this position. Anywho, <laughs> if he is able to respect your decision and also be committed to supporting you in your celibacy, then great, that's fantastic. You know, he might feel that, you know, he's gonna propose soon. You know, he might feel that, you know, in the next few months, he's gonna propose and you guys are gonna get married anyway, so he doesn't mind withholding from having sex, but I just feel like it's gonna be difficult for your boyfriend 
um, to just completely stop having sex, especially if he's someone who regularly enjoys having sex and he doesn't believe in the same way that you do in regards to not having sex outside of marriage. There's a deeper meaning behind it. It's not that you're just not having sex. The whole premise around it is that you are making a decision to live for God. You want to continue the rest of your days seeking to live for God in every area and every aspect of your life. So it's not that you're just not having sex because you're waiting for someone to propose to you. There's a deeper meaning behind it. So if he doesn't have that same conviction or that same deep desire, like anything, he's just doing it for the sake of doing it. This is the conversation that you guys genuinely need to be able to have. I believe that if you've been together for that long, you guys should be able to be um, open and honest with each other about what exactly is that you want in your relationship. And if he feels that he can't do that, he doesn't want to be celibate, then what? Sis, you might have to let him go. <laughs> so this is the thing, right? I would love for people in relationships that are Christian, believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and was raised on the third day, and you believe the Bible, you believe the gospel, and you're in a relationship with someone and you've been having sex, I would love for those Christians who have received that conviction of their sin and know that what they're doing is wrong, I would love for both the guy and the girl in the relationship to both come together and make the decision as a couple that they are going to wait. They're no longer going to have sex and they're going to wait until they get married. That is my dream. I would love to see that happen because you will be setting an amazing example of what it means to truly give your life to God and truly have a desire to please God with your life in every aspect of your life, including your relationship. I would rather see couples coming together and wanting to live for God and glorify God in their relationship by refraining from having sex, even if you've done it before, and seeking to move forward in your relationship without the sex, because you want to actively please God and live according to God's will for our lives. But if your boyfriend or your girlfriend is really not on that, he or she is not about that life, then you have to be able to come to the decision as to whether or not it's healthy for you to continue in that relationship. Even if you decide to stay with that person, they will only become a hindrance to what your goal is. Your goal is that you do not want to have sex anymore outside of marriage. You want to live for God. You want to do things the way that God has intended for you. You don't want anything, any sin or anything to hold you back from actively living the life that God has called you to live. So if your boyfriend in your relationship is constantly tempting you to have sex, constantly coercing you to have sex, because you've already had sex before, it might be a lot easier for him to do it. And obviously you have feelings for this person, you've had sex before, so there's a spiritual connection there and the fact that, that there might be a soul tie, that's a whole nother conversation. But, <laughs> you know, it's easy for you, so for you to sleep with someone that you've already slept with before in the past and you're romantically involved with. I did a post on my Instagram page where I used this example and said that if you decide to become a vegan or a vegetarian and you no longer want to eat meat, but then your boyfriend who's a chef is always cooking things that has meat in it for you to eat, then it just destroys your whole goal and purpose of becoming a vegetarian because every meal that your boyfriend brings in front of you, every plate he dishes up in front of you has got meat in it. So eventually, if he's not on the same 
path as you to stop having sex outside of marriage and you continue being in that relationship with that person eventually it's going to be more than just the meat of the food that he's putting inside of you he's going to actually be giving you his meat to put inside of you okay <laughs> one thing that i definitely do not want to do is trivialize your relationship because I've been there, I'm a woman, I know what it feels like to be in love. I know what it feels like to be so emotionally attached and connected to somebody that you've given your time, your energy, your love, everything to that relationship. You want it to work. You see yourself marrying that person someday, you know, and it can be very difficult. And one thing I definitely would advise you is to pray about it. You have that conviction in your heart and you know that you don't want to have sex outside of marriage anymore and you know that this is something that God wants you to do then you can pray to God talk to him about it let him know how you feel let him guide you let him show you what exactly is that you need to do but ultimately God will not support something that goes against his word so he's not going to tell you that you should continue sleeping with that person because oh yeah you know God understands no what God has said in his word is what God has said in his word God's looking at you like I said what I said okay i said what i said what i said i said what i said okay at the same time god is also loving he's merciful he's gracious and he knows he knows your heart he knows how you feel he sees everything but so one of the things that stops us from truly trusting God is because we're scared, we're afraid. We feel like we can never have a relationship like this ever again. We can't meet anyone that's going to love us the way that person loves us. Or we can't love anybody else more than who more than how much we love this person we don't want to have to start all over again we don't want to have to be like oh yeah i'm single again back to square one i was in a relationship for seven years with this person and now because i want to live for god i have to start from square one like why is god not letting me have any fun why can't i live why can't i just be happy but one thing that we have to realize is that if you know that god loves you and you truly believe that god has a plan and a purpose for your life Anything that God tells us to do is for our benefit. I cannot reiterate that enough. Anything that God tells us to do in his word is for our benefit. And he always, his thoughts towards us are always of good and not of evil. He doesn't tell us to do things in order to us, in order for us not to have fun or to enjoy life. God wants us to have an enjoyable life. But there's certain principles and boundaries that he has set in his word that will never change. There are principles in a bible that people actually live by people that are not christians people that are atheists people that don't even believe in god they live by those principles and they see those principles work for example the principle of sowing and reaping we all know that if you sow something you're gonna reap something that's a biblical principle that anybody can live by and will see the effect of that principle actually happen so the same thing with sex god has designed sex god one thing i want you guys to know okay is that sex is good okay sex is not a dirty thing it's not a bad thing okay god created sex for a reason and for a purpose for us to enjoy our partners and for us to procreate but there was a boundary that god set and that is that sex should happen within the confines of marriage between a husband and a wife that is what god has said in his word now if you as a christian are going to go against that you know like you're not you're not really doing the things according to what the bible says and that's basically it it's as simple as that sex is good sex is great but he says that there are boundaries in which sex has to take place and that is within a marriage between a husband and a wife it has to be within marriage so don't for one second think that god is trying to stop you from enjoying your life i genuinely believe that my decision to stop having sex outside of marriage although it cost me my relationship with my daughter's father because he wasn't one he wasn't trying to marry me we were only like 21 if he proposed to me that day i might have said yes because you know i was in love with him and you know we had a child together i have always said from when i was young that 
the person that I end up um, losing my virginity to is the person that I want to marry. And this is something that I've always said. So, you know, I could have said yes if he asked me, but he didn't and he didn't want to get married. We were both 21. Did I even want to get married, you know? But one thing I definitely believed is that my decision to stop having sex outside of marriage is because I wanted to please God. And I genuinely believe that God will honour that. And I know that whoever God has for me is always going to be better. Sometimes it's so hard for us to let go of something because we're scared or we don't trust God enough to be able to um, allow him to give us something better. And sometimes we have to actually open our hands and let go of something for us to actually receive something better back. And it's really difficult to see that when you're in the relationship, especially if you've been in a relationship with someone for so long. I would honestly ask you to pray about it seek god about it talk to god talk to your partner talk to your boyfriend have that conversation see where their mindset is at because there's no point in you striving and trying to um, remain in a relationship that is not glorifying god or remain with somebody that is not trying to please god is not on the same page as you even if you guys end up getting married tomorrow Will he continue to be a hindrance to your relationship with God? Is he going to continue to live a reckless life or a life that is sinful in other ways? Or a life that where he doesn't really care about pleasing God? He doesn't care about living a righteous life? Is that the kind of marriage or the person that you want to continue to be with? These are the things that you have to think about. Yes, you might be in love. Yes, he might wait with you and you guys end up getting married. But where is his mindset at? Is he trying to live for God? Is he trying to please God? What morals, what values does he hold as a person that you feel that he's somebody that is fitting to marry in the first place? We can't just get married just because we want to be able to sleep with our partner. There's so many other things involved when it comes to this, to the decision of who you choose to marry you have to look at everything else about that person before you feel that yes you want to marry that person wanting to have sex within marriage is one thing but then let's look at everything else about this person and see whether or not this person is husband material or wife material okay i'm thinking that maybe i should turn on my bedroom light because it's getting really dark back there okay one second. I think that's better. I don't know. Yes, the Bible speaks about getting married so that you don't burn in your passion, but you have to look at the context of what Paul was saying in that particular scripture. The church that he was speaking to at the time, there was so much fornication going on, so much adultery going on, that he was basically letting them know that instead of you to um, find your own partner and get married, you're just out here sleeping around and um fornicating and committing adultery with other people's husbands and other people's wives so he advised them that get married find your own partner and get married and stop all of this madness that doesn't mean to say that you completely remove every other factor into the into your decision of who you marry at the end of the day if you have been in a relationship for seven years do you really want to continue to waste your years and waste your time in a relationship where you know that you're not really sure as to whether or not he's going to marry you or not so you've been you've been together for seven years and he hasn't proposed and you don't know if he's going to propose. You're just in that relationship and you guys are just having sex. You might even be living together. You're basically living as if you're already married. And for somebody, for a guy who is not a Christian or doesn't believe in the principles of the Bible and the Christian faith, to him is like, you know, do you even really need to get married? Some men feel like there's no point in even actually doing the whole wedding and buying a ring and all that jazz because he's already living as if he's your husband because you're living together he's having sex 24 7 with you or whenever he likes you know you guys are um sharing rent or you're paying bills together you're already treating your boyfriend as if he's your husband so it's like what extra effort does he need to make where where's the urgency where's the where's the the commitment some of you are actually 
living as though you're married and you're giving your boyfriend, husband benefits and he's still just your boyfriend. One thing that I want you guys to take from this video as well is that do not let the world fool you into thinking that men that want to marry you without sleeping with you don't exist okay that is so not true there are men out there christian men out there that are willing to marry without sleeping with you first they exist don't let the world fool you into thinking, oh, those kind of guys don't exist. What guy is going to want to marry me without having sex with me first? These men exist and these are the men that believe the same way that you do. These are other Christian men that actively want to live for God and want to do the things that God has called them to do and to live their lives the way that God has called them to live their lives. And they have a desire. They have the same desire and the same goal to wait till marriage because that's what they feel that God wants them to do and they're not backing down they're not changing their mind that's what they want to do so don't for one second be fooled into thinking that oh you know yes okay i'm celibate but then where's all the guys that are celibate and willing to become celibate with me you know yes there may be even christian guys in the church that say that they're celibate say that they're christians but then when you get into a relationship with them they're trying to sleep with you those ones are not serious i'm talking about serious guys who love God, they have a desire to please God with their lives and they are actively living for him. They're actively seeking to do the things which please him. Whatever you set your mind to do is what you're going to do. If your mentality is that, oh, well, you know, if I end up in a relationship, you know, anything can happen. It happens, you know, things happen. Anything can happen. No, anything cannot happen because I'm going to set boundaries. I'm going to actively seek to do what I need to do in order to make sure that I'm not doing stuff that I shouldn't be doing. Flee from temptation, as the Bible says. Actually flee as in run, okay? Some breakups are necessary in order for us to get back focused on God. And if that means breaking up with your boyfriend or your girlfriend of however long in order for you to actually be able to live for God then so be it if you're not at that point yet in your relationship with God where God is truly first and your desire is to please him with your life then there's still more work to be done but if you feel that you truly want to put God first and you truly want to live the life that God has called you to live as a Christian then these are the things that you have to take on board these are the things that you have to be willing to sacrifice these are the things that you have to be willing to do no one said that being a christian was easy the bible says that the road to righteousness is very narrow and very few are able to find it so we have to be able to get to that point as christians where we really want to live for god we want to do things the way that god has called us to do we see the bigger picture there's more to life than sex the bottom line is that you have to be able to trust god with your life and with your decisions. You have to be able to trust him. You have to be able to know that he wants the best for you. And I truly encourage you to pray, talk to God, really spend some quiet time with him and seek him about your particular relationship, your particular situation. A lot of things I've said is kind of like general statements that I've made, but I also want to be compassionate in a way that I want to empathize with you guys and let you know that I've been there. I know what it feels like to be in a relationship with someone and to feel that, you know, um, you don't want to have to break up with this person, but you feel like maybe you do. And it can be very difficult, but at the same time, when you have that conviction and you really know that and you really know and believe with all your heart that God loves you and he always has the best for you in mind, then there's no need to be afraid. We have to be able to approach God with childlike faith. Children are fearless. They don't need to worry about anything. They don't need to worry about bills. They don't need to worry about if there's food in the fridge because they, they just they just live they're just free they're just carefree children are so carefree in that way and so fearless in that way because they know that they have parents that do everything for them and help them and look after them we need to be in that same childlike faith with god where we know that god has got us that no matter what 
the situation may be no matter how difficult circumstances may be no matter the sacrifice that you need to make God is with you and he's going to honor your decision. He's going to be so pleased with you for seeking to put him first, seeking after the kingdom of God first, knowing that every other thing will be added to you. Everything that you need will be added to you. Talk to your boyfriend, talk to your girlfriend, have this conversation, see where they're at in their mindset and then make whatever decision that you feel God is leading you to make and I hope that this video has been of some form of help and clarity to you but ultimately continue to pray and talk to God and seek God for clarity read your Bible read the scriptures read over the scriptures talking about fornication and sex outside of marriage um, allow God to give you that conviction and when you have that conviction seek to want to please God seek to want to do something about it seek to want to take your relationship with God to the next level and actively live for God the goal is to to know God intimately the goal is to want to have such a close and intimate relationship with God that anything that distracts that anything that stops that needs to be removed because God has to be number one he has to be first you have to want to put him first knowing that he's taking care of everything that concerns your life if any of you have any more questions or you want more advice or if there's anything specific that you want to talk to me about feel free to email me and I really hope that this video has been of help to you guys um, I'm gonna be continuing to do more videos on celibacy and sex and relationships and things like that from a Christian perspective because it's something that I'm definitely passionate about I just want you guys to know that this is just one small area of our lives as, as Christians. There's so many other things that we need to be doing as Christians in this world, in this day and age right now, in the society and in the world that we live in that's much more important than making the decision to stop having sex outside of marriage. So don't let this one small area of your life be a hindrance to the bigger picture of everything that God has for you in your Christian walk. So deal with what you need, what needs to be dealt with and keep it moving. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you have enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share. If there's anyone that you know that you feel this video would be of help to, make sure you share it with them. And I will catch you in my next video. Peace out. I'm always eating fruit. <laughs> <laughs>